subscribe to bizbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories when american film director oliver stone was filming put in for a documentary in 2017 i will let you in on a secret the incident put in narrated happened during bill clinton's visit to moscow in 2000 mr president what do you feel about russia joining nato Bill Clinton reacted with an enthusiastic why not but the rest of the delegation went cold after all NATO was set up after World War II expressly to contain Russia and if the enemy itself joined the gang what was the purpose of NATO Putin uses this excuse among others to justify his actions today claiming that the west never really trusted Russia but should such rejection lead to retaliation Certainly works at the box office for Hollywood films like Joker whose repeated rejection led to the protagonist turning into a psychopath or should rejection spur you into working harder to prove yourself Harry Potter's author J.K. Rowling was rejected by 12 publishers but she didn't quit guess it depends on one's point of view and psychological makeup but for Putin a once proud KGB spy Russia being treated thus was a major loss of face He had watched helplessly from the sidelines as the once mighty iron curtain disintegrated into pieces. He saw how the then US Secretary of State James Baker personally played Mikhail Gorbachev, the Soviet premier at the time. Mr Gorbachev, please withdraw your troops from East Germany. A menacing 250,000 Russian soldiers were posted there at the time. We promised that NATO would not shift even an inch eastwards. Although the fine print of the withdrawal agreement omitted this promise, also the country badly needed the 9 billion dollars West Germany offered them, an amount considered too small even by 1990 standards. But back then, the condition of ordinary Russians was so terrible that even Putin moonlighted as a taxi driver in 1991 to supplement his income while working for the KGB. With the Soviets withdrawing their troops, the Berlin Wall fell in 1992, broken stone by stone by people from both sides, resulting in the reunification of East and West Germany after 43 years. As the new Russian leadership got more pally with the West and Boris Yeltsin became a regular visitor to the White House in the 1990s, Putin saw how Bill Clinton tempted Yeltsin to secure his approval for NATO's expansion. In return the US will invest 4 billion dollars in Russia and give it membership in the G7. Cheers. Salute. But Russia too went back on their word given to Ukraine in 1994. We promise same or leave. When the breakup of the 15 strong Soviet Union left them with an arsenal of nuclear and tactical weapons which they returned to Russia under the Budapest memorandum. give them back to us and we guarantee to respect your sovereignty later as a senior kgb official he witnessed how nato had completely disregarded russia's and the un's and the pope's objections bombing serb forces in kosovo for 78 days in 1999 after they began indulging in major atrocities against the civilian population almost immediately former warsaw pact countries one by one fell into the arms of nato headed by their once arch enemy the usa followed in 2004 by Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, all former Soviet bloc states. When Ukraine, the former USSR's second largest state, voted to join NATO in 2019, it seemed to him as though the Americans had planted missiles right on his doorstep and that he was now completely vulnerable. Moscow, you see, via the M3 is just a 5-hour, 490-kilometer drive from the Ukrainian border. To Putin, Russia was robbed of its strategic depth of a vast landmass that neither Napoleon in 1812 could cross nor the Germans overcome in 1941. As far back as 1997, George Kennan, arguably the most famous Russian expert in US history, predicted NATO's expansion would be America's most fateful foreign policy error in the entire post-Cold War era. This sentiment was once again echoed a decade later by William Burns, presently the CIA director under the Biden administration. It is Putin's firm belief that Russia was equally responsible for bringing Nazi Germany to its knees in World War II, and that Russia deserves to be a key pillar of the European security architecture. 
He is also possibly unhappy about Russia getting sidelined and China becoming America's predominant geopolitical rival. Covertly and overtly therefore, he has tried to maintain some level of influence in his part of the world. Especially after the April 2008 NATO Bucharest summit in which it was announced Ukraine and Georgia will eventually join the alliance. Reportedly, Putin was livid and he made his displeasure clear to the American president. George, you have to understand that Ukraine is not even a country. A few weeks after the NATO summit, Russian troops attacked Georgia, claiming that the pro-Russian regions of Abkhazia and South Ossetia were being threatened by Tbilisi's pro-Western government. They are using the exact same excuse to invade Ukraine, except that the provinces are Donetsk and Luhansk this time. History repeats itself, it is said. So see the similarities between Georgia and Ukraine. Georgia had a rose revolution in 2003 with mass protests forcing the pro-Russian government of Edward Shevardnadze to resign from office. A year later in 2004, Ukraine had its orange revolution when a matchup between the two victors, the pro-Western Yushchenko and the pro-Russian Yankovych was mired in scandal. Russia interfered clandestinely, allegedly by having Yushchenko poisoned. He suffered disfigurement but has since made a full recovery. That brought Yulia Tymoshenko in Ukraine and Mikhail Shashkovili in Georgia, both pro-Western leaders. In Ukraine, Russia had the other victor, Donetsk born Yankovic to keep it in check, but he had no such asset in Georgia, which prompted the invasion. The invasion of Georgia compelled Shashkovili to follow a more restrained path and not pursue the NATO angle any longer. Meanwhile in 2014 Ukraine's pro-Russian Yankovic rejected an EU trade deal and instead took a 15 billion dollar bailout from Russia. The sellout led to massive protests in the form of the Maidan revolution. Sign the deal, sign the deal, forcing him to flee the country. Ukraine then elected Petro Poroshenko, who openly began flirting with Europe, rejecting Putin. who decided to take by force what he could first securing his long time crucial naval base of Sevastopol in the Black Sea ironically Crimea was given to the Ukrainians by the Soviets themselves in 1954 in the hope of promoting brotherly ties between the people of Ukraine and Russia then using a combination of cyber warfare local militia civilian protests aided by unmarked special forces a political coup was staged forcing people in a democratic referendum to formally request to join the Russian Federation then he began heating up the situation in Donetsk and Luhansk by aiding a separatist movement that only quieted down for a while after one of the missiles supplied by Russia brought down Malaysian Airlines flight 17 with 298 passengers and crew in July 2014 while flying over eastern Ukraine The Minsk Accord that resulted in February 2015 called for the withdrawal of foreign troops and mercenaries from Donetsk and Luhansk, which never really happened. After Ukraine too voted overwhelmingly to join NATO in Feb 2019, it now seemed just a matter of time before that too slipped away. Putin was also alarmed by Ukraine's purchase of the powerful Bakhtiar drones from Turkey. which had ensured the defeat of Armenia in the 2020 war with Azerbaijan and helped recover most of the Nagorno-Karabakh that had been out of their control for 3 decades. Arguably, Putin was fighting a losing battle right from the start. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Annexing Crimea that had a 65% ethnic Russian population was easier, but Ukraine had 29.6 However, even this 30% was not ethnic, but transplanted by Joseph Stalin from Russia a hundred years back to repopulate the area. It is to protect these Russians that Putin is now using as an excuse to invade all of Ukraine. Moscow already treats them as its citizens. It has issued them Russian passports, provided them with the COVID vaccine Sputnik, made schools follow the Russian curriculum, and used the Russian ruble instead of the Ukrainian currency hryvnia. Georgia's invasion lasted 5 months and Putin got what he wanted because the world either didn't notice or didn't care. Now he is stronger and more desperate, but at the same time the West has been far quicker and united in its response. How long will this one last? Postscript. Where are they now? James Addison Baker the 3rd is 92 years old and lives in Houston, Texas. The former Secretary of State under George Bush is still active on the World Justice Project and the Climate Leadership Council. 
he voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020. George W. Bush, 75. He now lives a quiet life in Texas and has largely refrained from politics. He published a memoir in 2010, Decision Points, and a biography of his father, George H. W. Bush, the former president, called 41. Bill Clinton, 75. Presently lives in Chappaqua, New York. After office, he created the Clinton Presidential Foundation to help the underprivileged and was very involved in Hillary Clinton's presidential run in 2016. Mikhail Gorbachev, age 91, he lives in a dacha outside the city of Moscow. Popular in the West, he has appeared in commercials of Pizza Hut, Apple and Louis Vuitton, though he is very unpopular in Russia for overseeing the fall of the Soviet Union. He tried to enter politics once again during Putin's first term but was unsuccessful. Boris Yeltsin died in 2007, aged 76 years in Moscow. A severe alcoholic, he resigned as president in his second term and an impeachment attempt was made against him on corruption and other charges. President Putin declared the day of his funeral a national day of mourning. Mikhail Saakashvili, 54, the former president of Georgia, was the head of the Executive Reform Committee of Ukraine before the invasion. Yulia Tymoshenko, 61. The former Prime Minister of Ukraine, who became popular in the Orange Revolution, was jailed in 2013 on fraud charges for abuse of authority in signing overpriced gas contracts with Russia. She heads the political party Bakhtevshinya. Viktor Yushchenko, 68. The former President of Ukraine was allegedly poisoned by the Russians but survived the assassination attempt. Once partners with Yulia Tymoshenko, he is now her rival and leads the political bloc Our Ukraine. Viktor Yanukovych, 71. The former Ukrainian president now lives in exile in Russia after fleeing Ukraine in 2014. He was sentenced in absentia by the Ukrainians for 13 years imprisonment. He may once again play a part post Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The 283 victims of Malaysian Airlines flight 17. Russia refused to either apologize or pay compensation to the families of the victims. Under the Montreal Convention, airlines must pay damages to the victims' families regardless of the circumstances of the crash. Estimates put the compensation figure paid by Malaysian Airlines at about 1 billion US dollars. Baseball's Limerick. Putin has upped the ante in Ukraine. Challenge the world order creating chaos and pain. Is NATO enough or some sterner stuff? Whatever the outcome, it's Cold War once again. You will also find these sources listed in the video description section.